Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Statewide Clinical Network Conversation Series hosted by the Commission on Excellence and Innovation in Health. We're very excited to see you here this morning on a Friday on the lead up to Christmas and very grateful that you're able to make the time to join us live. For those of you who are not joining us live, um, we are recording these sessions so that you're able to access them um, outside of the time that we're here um, recording them live goes without saying, um, and we hope that you enjoy the recording of this session. Before I go any further, I would like to start by acknowledging that I'm on Ghana land today and that I pay respect to the spiritual relationship of Ghana people um, with their country. I'd also like to acknowledge the Ghana people as the custodians of the Adelaide region and recognise that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still as important to the living Ghana people today. The Commission on Excellence and Innovation in Health is an agency that's all about delivering better for South Australians. And so our vision is together, let's create better health care for all South Australians. This vision is about how we can, um, to, can achieve things together in, in networks and collaborations and absolutely about how we can measure that we've achieved that. So the delivery of better is about being able to measure that we're doing something better today than we were yesterday. The Commission on Excellence in in, in innovation in health uh, is the lead agency for innovation in healthcare in South Australia. And we do that by bringing together consumers, clinicians and other collaborators to work towards our vision. The CAH portfolio uh, is made up of various components and we're here to talk about one of the really critical um, elements of that today. And that is the cardiology statewide clinical network within our clinical networks portfolio. Just quickly to highlight that we have a fantastic strength around partnerships and building partnerships to shift the system and, and transform the ideas that are happening by creating strong partnerships between different agencies and entities across sectors. Our Patient Reported Measures Program is all about empowering patients and using um, patient experiences and patient outcomes to measure what matters in the health system and making that important and valued. And we're really excited about the upcoming uh, establishment of that program across the sector. Our Clinical Informatics Program is about delivering insights that really matter, again, and delivering them um, to the to the people who can action them. So delivering them particularly to, to clinicians. So hence clinical informatics. Really excited about our innovation portfolio and the opportunity to seek new perspectives and to um, understand how we might do things better, recognizing that we can't continue to just do them the same. The statewide clinical networks are groups of people who come together um, to, to focus on a particular area. So in this instance today, we're here to talk about cardiology. Um, we have statewide clinical networks that are led by a steering committee, um, clinical and consumer-led um, engagement and focused on building connections around the community, around the area of pr practice that they work in. Our statewide clinical networks are not about producing outputs or writing things and, and printing them. Our statewide clinical networks are about building a community that can work on, um, on a sustainable approach to delivering better for South Australians. Um, we're really excited um, that we have our eight statewide clinical networks presenting throughout this series. And, and that includes um, the surgical perioperative, chronic pain, clinical genomics, adolescent transition care, urgent care, cancer, palliative care, and the one that we're here to talk about today, which is our cardiac care statewide clinical network. This is the last in the series of the Statewide Clinical Network Conversation Series, so I won't be um, plugging the future ones, but absolutely, if you're watching this one online, go and have a look at the others as well. So there's a Statewide Clinical Network Conversation Series for each of the eight clinical networks, which has been um, held since October this year, um, and so those um, videos will also be available. We're up to the cardiac care um, series. Just probably just a quick bit of housekeeping before I hand over to our presenter today. Um, just asking that um, people are keeping their mics on mute during the presentation and then we'll have an opportunity for Q&A at the end. You can use the chat function 
and we'll uh, work through that at, at the finish of the session. Um, and just to let you know that we are recording the presentation component of the conversation today. And then at the end of the conversation, we'll turn the recording off to give us um, an open space to have a, a free and um, flowing conversation without the recording on. So for those of you that are online with us now, we are recording. So without further ado, I would like to um, stop sharing my screen, sorry, um, and introduce um, the statewide clinical network uh, lead, Professor Jamie Bennett. Um, Jamie, Jamie is trained in both adult and paediatric cardiology and is currently the Director of Cardiothoracic Surgery at Flinders Medical Centre, Director of Adelaide Cardiothoracic Staff Specialists at the Women's and Children's Hospital um, and at the Royal Darwin Hospital. Um, he's a professor of cardiothoracic surgery, Linda's University, and he's an extensive involvement in the research program at the cardiothoracic department. He's made a significant contribution to the outcomes of cardiac surgery in Indigenous Australians and continues to promote and strive for improvement of outcomes in cardiac surgery more broadly. It's over 70 peer-reviewed research papers and has been on an invited uh, speaker regionally and internationally and is actively involved in multiple large international trials. And to speak to Jamie's uh, leadership of the Cardiac Care Clinical Network, Jamie um, is working with us here at the CEOH um, to bring together the cardiac community across South Australia. And we're very grateful to him for his leadership and for um, working to bring that steering committee and the broader, broader uh, network around cardiology together um, to achieve better for South Australians. Jamie, I'm going to stop talking and hand over to you um, and get you to share your presentation and look forward to talking with you at the end. Thank you very much for that, Katie, and thanks for the introduction. Um, I think I'm sharing the right screen here, so uh, correct me if I'm not. And um, thank you might all. Need to, might need to pop into the presentation mode because we can see your notes. Again. I always do that, that's okay. Is that better? We're in there now? Just waiting for it to come up. Yeah, no problem is I want to go to it. Um, let me get out of this again. Apologies, everybody. The uh, When I don't share it that way, it... Um... Yeah. I had the same trouble, Jim. So <laughs> that's where I was going. Oh, hang on, was the screen? No worries. Now we should be good. Okay. Over so... Thanks everybody. And uh, um, firstly, uh, I thank Katie and the commission for the opportunity to take on the role of the clinical lead. And we'll talk a little bit more about that a bit uh, as the talk goes on. Um, it's uh, improving how we deliver service and providing increased accessibility to service is one of the things that I'm passionate about. And I think that we've got an opportunity to do that. And some of the things we've started to do are, are built around that. Um, I do want to acknowledge Kate and Emma, um, and uh, Kate's been a, uh, a great help and has, to be honest with you, kept me in track for the last six months uh, since I've taken this role on, and uh, I'd like to thank her, and she's an integral part in the, in what we're trying to do and how we're uh, moving forward. Um, so the vision of the Cardiac Care Network was to have something that all South Australians with or at risk of cardiovascular disease can efficiently access quality care that is actually um, of an equivalent standard and accessible no matter where people are within the state. And that's to reduce the burden of travel, to reduce the burden on the system with regards to not just Metro LHNs, but country LHNs and country hospitals and try and improve ways. And I'll talk a little bit around some of the ideas we've had with that. But essentially part of the platform that I came to this position with was along that model with the, dividing the state into sort of levels of service where level one service is mapping out what care is currently available, identifying the holes that may exist. And we're not just talking about metro, we're talking about outer metro, regional and remote territories within South Australia. What services are, exist, what services overlap and have some visibility of what services are provided at any one time point. And some of the problems we know exists is there are some regional areas that are, are very well serviced and provide an excellent level of care, but three or four different people going. 
And it's quite possible that they could all be there within the same week and then nobody's in that space again for another three or four weeks. So it's around identifying what we have, working out what we don't have, and then building a better way of delivering that service with some visibility to make sure that when patients need access to care, we've got a process that they can enter the system where they are and get an equivalent level of service. Second part of the goal is to then try and build what we're classifying as level two services, which is really utilizing the, the extra specialty level skill that exists within the predominantly the Metro LHNs, but some of the regional centers as well. And this would be predominantly inpatient or, or specialized ambulatory care services that require a focused way of functioning and delivering that patients need to move to those level two services. And as part of improving the level one and the level two, our hope is to then be able to identify some what we're classifying as level three, which is sort of high end specialty services that either do or do not exist currently, work out what we need, how we deliver those, and then try and build those into the level two as a, as a, um, as a next step above and beyond the level two services to provide something that we aren't able to do currently. And I'll touch on one of those as an example of what we're trying to do in, in uh, in a few slides time. So you know, different type of schematic, this would be similar to the all patients and there's a lot of Northern Territory patient service by the South Australian system that we currently stand. So everybody can access the system where they are and get that, as I said, an equivalent level of quality and accessibility. Then we've got the four major LHNs that are based in the metro area where the specialty level services predominantly would be provided out of. And then the level three service, which, which would actually be a combination of quality um, practitioners that are delivering the level three services based out of the level two. And it may be at one site, it may be at multiple sites, or it may be a, a mobile team that moves around sites, but it's basically building that level three service, which is the, the next level above what we're currently able to do in some specialty areas. So who is the cardiac care network as we stand? Well, I, Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge Phil Titterman, who was the clinical lead prior to myself. Um, I think Phil has put in place a framework and a structure um, to try and take things forward and has done a, a wonderful job doing that. Uh, there were a few roadblocks put in place, um, namely COVID, um, that I think slowed down a lot of momentum for the previous steering committee and uh, for some of the work that Phil was trying to achieve, as well as some other issues that have uh, caused that to be problematic. So. Um, uh, so I thank Phil for the hard work and the effort that he has um, done in establishing the network. When we took over in the middle of this year, um, the people on the on the steering committee as it existed at that time were all at or beyond the two-year window of their initial appointments. And we thought it was a time to refresh. Um, so we offered everybody the opportunity to reapply, but did an expressions of interest for um, new people to come onto the committee as well as changing the structure a little bit in that what we also did is that there are a number of existing subcommittees, which again, I'll touch on as we move forward in today's talk, but um, we've brought the chairs of the subspecialty committees onto the steering committee. And these are the people on the right-hand side of that list. So um, RJ Sinha, Jerome, uh, Euron Hendricks with a needle in helping uh, Christine Bodiniak and Ian Ganes and Andrew Kelly, Patrick Disney, Gavin Wheaton, Rosie Tramarco and Rosanna Tavella across the different uh, subspecialty groups. Um, we've also got myself and Kate and then the new people who applied and that we've appointed to the steering committee, which we've only met twice um, since we've gone through the EOI process. Um, Wendy Corkill, who's a remote and regional nurse based in Alice Springs, who's got extensive history in providing regional cardiac care, as well as uh, in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Graham Clen, who's a consumer. Um, Sarah Norton, who's also a consumer. Prop Prash Sanders, who's based at uh, Carlin as an EP specialist and very well known internationally. Um, Andrea Papini, who is a uh, paramedic uh, working with SAS. Um, Cynthia Papendick, who's an emergency physician also based at Carlin. Caroline Astley, who is a clinical nurse in cardiology who's worked across multiple systems, has previously been involved in uh, uh, rehab and uh, rehabilitation, uh, cardiac rehabilitation services has worked at SAMRI and was also part of the previous cardiac networks that existed 10 years ago and was the uh, lead for that at the time. So has extensive uh, expertise in this space. Marie Ludlow is the current chair of the Heart Foundation locally. Alicia Chan, who's a, a cardiologist and heart failure specialist based out of Narland, who's the current chair of Cardiac Society and um, the South Australian branch. Simon Lockwood, who is a GP based in Roxby Downs. 
and Lewin Quinn, who is a cardiologist based out of Narland primarily. So we've got a very broad blend of services that are involved in the delivery of cardiac care. We've got a group of people across the um, different uh, LHNs and country representation. And I think we've got a, a, a nice blend in what we need to go forward. And I must say the first two meetings have been quite uh, positive with some of the plans we have on the table. So what does it look like at the moment? Well, basically we've got the statewide cardiac care um, network and steering committee, which sits at the cross, which clearly I chair as being the clinical lead with, with Kate's help. Um, across the bottom, we have eight subgroups as we or subcommittees as we currently stand. So cardiac nursing chaired by your own Hendrik Lenita Lin, um, the cardiac structural intervention chaired by RJ Sinhal, the cardiothoracic stream chaired by Gavin Wheaton. Um, we have, since we started, established a congenital group. Um, that group hasn't met at this stage and Andrew Kelly is going to chair that. And we have already within that established an adult congenital working group that Patrick Disney is going to chair, which will be part of um, what we do next year, but we'll be building a model of care and service delivery platform because there's some national work in that space at the moment. Um, there was a pre-existing data and information subgroup uh, that is not probably going to sit in that same line as we are currently and we'll move up and provide support to all the subgroups and to the steering committee with regards to data and informatics, which is clearly something that is the strength of the CIH as we stand currently. Um, rather than being its own uh, independent group. Um, electrophysiology chaired by Anand Ganesan, heart failure, Christine Virginiak, and rehabilitation by Rosie Tramarco. So current projects, and this is where we're sort of talking about some of those level two, level three services. So um, what has been part of the structural heart group is development of what's known as MitraClip program. So MitraClip is a highly specialized um, uh, procedure and device that is aimed for people with very sick hearts and very uh, and regurgitant valve inside the heart that aren't suitable or fit for an operation. And there's good evidence that placing a clip to hold the leaflets together can reduce the amount of leak of the valve and make the patients functionally much better. Um, South Australia is the only state that does not have an active mitral clip program. And over the last six months, we have worked hard to try and build a statewide model and part of the reason for that, that this is a high cost low volume procedure and it's a model that we want to establish by which we have a statewide MDT we have a statewide collaborative approach so we have one proceduralist from um, from Royal Adelaide as part of Carlin and one from Flinders as part of Sarlan so RJ Sinhal and Ross Roberts Thompson who together will do the procedures and do them at whichever site the patient belongs to whether that be at Carlin or Sarlan and the reason for that is that it actually allows us to deliver high level expert skill sets without learning curves, reducing the, the risk of uh, volume, diluting the skill set. And that this will always be low volume procedure in this state with the numbers we have, but allows us to do so through a statewide MDT, appropriate decision making, and then uh, highly skilled procedures that are delivered in the best interest of patients. So, um, we're hopeful that that will be formally funded um, by mid-year next year. Um, there is some funding in place at the moment, which is a little piecemeal, but we want to centralise that funding through the MDT process and have that service delivered at both sites as it currently has been established and build on that with future devices and other ideas we've got. So that's happening as we stand and is a, a, has been a, a reasonably big project for us to get up to this point. The heart failure group have been particularly active and have done some very good work. They've mapped out some care delivery across the state. They have an idea of where services are delivered and by who. They've developed a new heart failure guideline, which is part of the national standards that have just been released and have adopted a, a platform by that, which that can be um, delivered locally. Um, there's a standardized referral pathway that will be across all LHNs um, for patients needing a heart failure referral. And that's a work in progress. They're looking at getting a website up that will help with that. And they're probably going to be the first group that we move with with regards to health pathways, which I'll touch on on the next slide um, with the primary healthcare networks and the GP models, which are well established in other specialties, but not yet in the cardiac space. Um, we've inherited the ACS myocardial injury, injury registry, which exists, which uh, as everybody would know, Derek Chu is the um, commissioner of CIH. He's done a lot of work in the trial platform known as RapidX, uh, looking at uh, ACS and troponin care and how we can influence decision-making and outcomes. 
um, the data that exists with that needed a home. Um, we brought that in under the uh, network as well. Um, we have a um, steering group for that, which isn't a formal subgroup at this stage, um, which has a representative from the three Metro LHNs um, with regards to oversight of that data. And it's something that we will be using um, over the next 12 months or so, building some decision-making tools um, that will support decision-making around um, patients presenting with chest pain, um, the likelihood of it being problematic, suggested management pathways, and the need for transfer. And we can hopefully build all that in with regards to streamlining service and making sure patients don't travel if they don't need to, can get delivered quality care where they are, but also reduce the burden on the, on the, on the beds in the system, both remote, regional, and metro. Um, and then the final thing is the EP group have actually developed a, a proposal on a statewide remote monitoring system for implantable devices. Um, at the moment, this is something that is done in a piecemeal fashion across public and private, depending on who is the ownership cardiologist. Um, it's a goal to try and have some kind of centralized approach to that so that we can make sure that any flags for device failure or significant clinical events are acknowledged and acted upon. And that would then be fed back to the appropriate um, ownership clinician or service um, to make sure that those patients aren't missed and that we have an improved way of doing that. So that document is very well down the path of being finalized. There's some minor tweaking to do, and then we need to work out how we establish that and how we fund that going forward. Um, State-made multiple group program I've already touched on, so I'll skip over this, but basically it's something that is uh, the first time that we've had significant collaboration between the interventional cardiology groups across um, two LHNs in this city. Um, that is a huge step forward. And it's allowing us to provide a service that didn't exist and to do so in a manner that will only ensure quality outcomes and, and have a greater guarantee of providing the service in the longer term with that level of quality we need. The Heart Failure Group, as I touched on as well, have developed a number of things. Um, we'll move through this, but essentially the um, gut management guideline and consistency and standardization of management across the state. Um, a very collaborative group as we currently stand in Christine Virginia has done a fantastic job uh, progressing that to where that is and we're at the final stage review of those, uh, those processes. ACS registry I've also touched on and we'll go through that. Um, statewide monitoring, um, so this is where we're going to have I think the ability to do something that doesn't exist currently and this will actually hopefully be able to be delivered public, private, regional, remote, and metro. So all patients that have got a device that's been implanted will go on to a one common system to then be able to make sure that they're monitored appropriately. And uh, how we uh, um, use the, the existing expertise at the different LHNs to do this and then build upon that to make sure that we've got a, a centralized approach is, uh, is the goal. Plans for 2023, um, so I said we're uh, in the process of starting a relationship with the health pathways um, within the primary health networks um, to build uh, standardised models of care and ability to access the system in a more standardised and, and accessible way. Heart failure will probably be first because they're the most developed in this path already, um, but those discussions have started and we'll be building upon that next year. Um, we're in the first six months of next year, hoping to establish a remote regional uh, Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander subgroup that will actually be able to provide expertise across all of the other subgroups with the way that we actually start mapping care and work out how care is delivered for the different specialty areas. We've started conversations already around developing a statewide cardiac rehabilitation model. And for those who don't know at the moment, rehabilitation is a little bit variable across the state, depending which LHN you're based at publicly, which hospital you're at privately and whether you're country or metro. Um, there's been some excellent work done by the ICC net under Phil Tillemans uh, and Rosie Tramarco's supervision to the point where I think it's probably fair to say that some of the cardiac rehab facilities that are available in country maybe are superior or at least delivered in a way that is nation leading. Um, and I think that we can build upon that, work out how we can do that better for everybody with hopefully one common pathway, no matter where you are, um, to get into the rehabilitation program and then a standardized rehab uh, plan that everybody accesses the same um, the, the same level of care and the same output with regards to what the goals are. 
and then hopefully do that across multiple platforms, whether that be face-to-face, -face, telehealth, um, via an app, via a downloadable video, and then with a follow-up so that patients can utilize that information in the manner that they choose best. And hopefully finally de deliver that in multiple languages and culturally specific ways as well, that we can have the same plan delivered um, and, and have that uh, suitable to get as many people as we can part of that. Um, adult congenital model of care, um, there's been some national guidelines released on um, adult congenital um, cardiac care. Um, and there's also been some previous work um, by the adult congenital group in the existing networks 10 years ago. So we're hoping that we can put those two documents together and come up with something that's relevant to South Australia. Um, nurse supported um, exercise stress test has previously been uh, part of the networks from 10 years ago. That document hasn't been updated. Um, there's a plan to update that as well as revamp the membership of the nursing subgroup to take on some other tasks. The final two things we've been trying to do over the last six months and now will be sometime in the early half of next year is a community engagement forum where we have a platform by which we can sample um, from the community um, quality and potential roadblocks or difficulties with accessing the system so that we can be aware of what may or may not need to change and how we can build from that. And also we're going to run some forums for rural GPs to try and also see that the ability, what, what some of the roadblocks may be with accessing the system and how care is provided or delivered um, outside of the metro areas to make sure that we're on the right track with uh, improving that. So um, that's all I've got to say to give people a bit of an idea. I suppose it's been a, a bit of a whirlwind six months. We've um, hit the ground running. We've got a completely new group. And I think that uh, we've probably got a pathway forward where if we can achieve some of the things we're hoping we'll have, uh, we've made a difference, but hopefully we can keep moving with all of these uh, plans we have. Thank you.